Hello and welcome to the Authentic Uprising Show. I'm your host, Jill Simons. I am so excited to grow in the radical art of standing in what God says about you with you today. This show is a place where we pour into our concept of who we are, how we've been created with intention by God, and how we can live out of the freedom that He has for us more every single day. Here we are, May 24th. It is launch day for our Trusting God from a Place of Safety retreat that I shared with you about last week. I'm so excited that launch day is here. And um, I'll share with you just very briefly kind of what the overview of the retreat is. We really seek to help you trust God more by deconstructing your relationship with God and looking at all the pieces of the puzzle to really to really diagnose what is not working here. We're going to look at the person of God, who he actually is, who your perception of him or how, what your perception of him might be, I guess I should say. And then we're going to look at yourself. What's your vision of yourself? What's your vision of your relationship with God and the stability of that relationship? And where are you getting your evidence for or against trusting God, both in historical history and in your personal history and how do we make space for God to show us his trustworthiness moving forward in our lives so it's a really empowering retreat that isn't going to um, promise to be some kind of magic bullet for you to walk away with this perfect trust but it's it is going to give you a level of clarity that you've probably never had before about why or where the issue is with trusting God so that you are able to move forward with the Lord in conversation about a very specific thing or set of things that he's inviting you to move through in order to trust him more. So it's 20% off this week through May 27th. You can use the code launch week and all of the links and everything you need are in the description of this podcast and YouTube video. And I just can't wait for you to join us. I think it's going to be really powerful, really beautiful experience. You can get either 30 day access so you can take it anytime and as many times as you want in 30 days, or you can get ongoing access for just a few dollars more where you'll have forever access to the retreat. So you can retake it as many times as you want. And I think it definitely has a lot of rewatch value. It's something that um, you can come back to again and again when you want to find and diagnose what issues are going on. So I cannot wait um, to see you guys inside. There's discussions available that I'll be answering your questions and be available to you in those comment sections. And I just hope that you'll join us. Hello, and welcome to the Authentic Uprising podcast. My name is Jill Simons, your host. And as always, you know how much I love being with you every week on this podcast. And this week I have two guests to share. This is the first time we've ever had two people on the podcast with me at the same time. Um, But this duo is so beautiful and how they've come together. And they're so uniquely positioned to talk about this aspect of community, not just because of the experience that they've had being in community with each other, but then also the experience they've had creating community together in a really beautiful way. So I hope that as we move through to the end of this month, talking about community and what the Lord really has for us on that front, that this episode really ignites your imagination about what is possible when you step out into community, when you embrace the design that God has and act on the faith that you are created to be in communion with other people. So my guests today are B and Kenzie from the Unraveled podcast. Um, You have may have heard their podcast and you may have heard of the Unraveled Retreats, which they run together. I've had the great pleasure of going on several of them and I've just seen the incredible fruit in community that results from that. So thank you both so much for being on with me today. Thank you, Jill. Thanks, Jill. So I'd love if you guys start by sharing with our guests about how your relationship with each other started and where that spark came from to really take the risk that you took to enter into relationship with each other. 
So, um, Ken's and I met on a retreat on a big retreat, very different from the ones that we host now. I think there were like almost 10,000 people there, maybe like 8,000 around that number. But, um, we always laugh at how we met because in the sea of all the people, we were in the same row and we just like turned to each other and we were like, Hey, and we just like acted like we were best friends, uh, like pretty immediately. So, um, but that was, you know, we met in a very intentional way. We were both going there searching for a deeper relationship with Christ. And I think that that is like a huge foundation for good friendship. And, um, you know, this series that you've launched is about, you know, healing wounds, digging into wounds, things like that. And I just remember that night sitting on the floor with Ken's, um, after the retreat was over to like three in the morning and we just shared our hearts. We shared our wounds. I mean, it was pretty immediate that we opened up to each other. And I think it was just because we were in that safe space of a retreat. And so that's why, um, retreats have such a like special place in our hearts. Totally. I think that it's easy to get caught up in the place that you're in. And both of us were in New York city at the time, finishing school. Um, and where it's hard to find community, uh, at a, in that age, it was like our early twenties. And, but it, I think both of us had that desire on our heart that there was something more, something deeper, um, someone we could add to our family, if you will. Um, and that's what good community and sisterhood does is they feel like family. I think recently, one of my friends, I told B this said, um, the reason we can feel so hurt sometimes more hurt by our friends than our family members is because they are the family that we choose to fill the spaces that maybe our parents unintentionally wounded and hurt us. And so it is one of our biggest goals and um, deepest desires for everyone to have relationship like that, where um, you really do will the good of the other, that definition of love. And so it has been incredible um to to like see the fruits of our friendship i mean i am married and have three children because of my meeting with bridget and her husband and that would have never happened and you don't know what can happen by opening yourself up had either of us been closed off who knows it might have been another acquaintance or friend but we desire deep friendships friendships that are going to get us to heaven one day and, and push us to be our best and see the gifts in that other woman and say, she is so awesome at this, this, and this, how can I support her, um, as she does me. And I, I, and we see it on our retreats, which I'm sure we'll talk about, but yeah, it's been just a gift from God. Yeah. All of it. And I think that that's so interesting that like you pointed out, it, it results from an openness and a willingness that you have for a depth of connection and really an ability to hope for that, which I think is so much the flavor of what we've been talking about this month so far is the fact that we cut ourselves off from this potential, like you're talking about when we don't even hold space for the hope that we can connect in community because so many of us do have wounds like we've talked about in relationship and friendships. I think that that's so true where those feel deeper because it's a chosen relationship versus family. Well, it's kind of a given that they're going to hurt us because you're just kind of a random group of people that's smushed together. Whereas friendships are really chosen with this level of intention. And so share with, share about what it is that has come out of this that has allowed this community that to, you know, at its core began with the two of you has become a larger community. I think so originally, I think the spark came during the pandemic. However, I think for years, Ken's and I had always known we were going to do something together, but we didn't hundred percent know what that was going to look like. We had done um, little like media projects together. Ken's was in acting school. I was in film when we met. And so like, we, we knew that we were going to in some way collaborate together and we were just like always close friends and then always thinking up and dreaming these creative dreams. And then when the pandemic hit, we started to hear from so many of our individual friends and then the community we built with the podcast that women were just like craving connection. And I think they saw the connection we had 
And they were kind of like, I want something like that. Not to say in any way we're perfect because we're definitely not, but I think it's just like when you strive for friendship for almost 10 years, that's something that I think a lot of women our age want and it's not it's not always easily accessible so we in 24 hours we thought of this idea to bring a bunch of women together into a beach house and to pray and to bring speakers like jill's a speaker now on retreat with us um and it just came together like we sold tickets on instagram like we didn't have a website we had nothing and we we sold the beach house out in like 24 hours and we just realized like, wow, like we are so ill-equipped, but like mm-hmm. God has a plan for this. And, um, it was just like, go, go, go ever since then. Like we've just seen such a um, desire on women's hearts for this community that we've just kept answering the call. Um, but I mean, we've, there's so many stories we could spend multiple podcasts telling you guys about stories of how hearts have changed on this retreat. Um, but we've just seen so many like hearts break open for the Lord and women come together and comfort each other, pray over each other and laugh with each other. And by the end, it's like, Ken's and I always say these women come in looking like one version of themselves and they leave. And like, we do one part of the retreat is a photo shoot and like the joy on their faces, like in the photo shoot, it's like, they look like different people. And so I think that friendship and joy and community can actually like change the way you look. So it's just been so wild is the best thing to say. Definitely wild. And it has totally changed me and Bridget too. Like the way I see people and the way I see myself and how I used to be. And, you know, we're all work in progresses. Like it never, the healing journey never ends. Okay. Let's just say it. And so Year, years ago, I, I think that there was this idea for me at least, and in high school and in college, like I have to look a certain way and I have to be this for everybody else. Um, and, and I will not show my cards. This, this is who I am. If I, I'm going to be who I want to be, and I'll just put that up in all areas of my life. And, and then there comes a point when you see like, but there's something deeper here and I have some really serious things going on. And I need trust and I need, um, deep friendship that will help me grow in these areas. I want to, but I think as women and as people and as humans and as Christians, we have a fear there that if we show our cards or show what we've been through or tell how our family really was when we grew up or share a a deep, deep, um, sin that we can't get rid of, then we won't have anyone. And it is the actual opposite. It's the opposite. You'll have everyone good who you're meant to have in your life. And so once like MB has totally helped me with this too, like once you give a little bit, it really, you said this bridge, it's, oh, it opens up the whole room. Sometimes when you're in like a room of when it's very, you know, surface level. Um, and then one person shares one little thing, you name it, it could be anything, something you're struggling with. And you just see everyone around start to open up. And once you have that, you don't want anything less. You don't want a surface level friend or someone you can't trust and share your deepest heart with. Absolutely. I think that that part of the beautiful thing that you've put together in those retreats is that there's an intensity to it in it being a weekend where you're together the whole time that really um, takes away the possibility of having a facade because nobody's that good to like do, you know, to have their mask on comprehensively throughout that whole time. And I've, I've been on two now of the three and it's so interesting how even though there might be um, visually apparent or seemingly apparent outliers at the beginning of a retreat, everybody gets folded in by the end. And I, in, in the two retreats that I've been on, I cannot think of an exception to that where people that maybe even didn't feel like this looks like the community that I would be a part of end up being a part of the fold. And I think that that speaks to what we respond to in other people is really the same thing that we're looking for people to respond to in ourselves, where there's, there's actually so much less 
that we need to have in common, that we need to share intimately to get to that point of being in community together than we think. I think a lot of times we idealize like, well, my ideal friend would be so similar in so many ways and maybe same faith, same hobbies, same interests, same point in life, et cetera, et cetera, and put a lot of limitations on where community can exist. And that's one of the beautiful things about the retreat is it kind of breaks that open the range alone, right? We, we always talk about it. Like our first one, we had like a 22 year old and then a 63 year old. And without a doubt, everyone always says, I love that we can learn from the young and learn from the old. And it's true. I think it's important to surround ourselves with, uh, what do they say? Like five years older than you, 10 years older than you in different seasons. And then also younger, we all are the body of Christ, like whatever, you know, um, faith you are and, um, whatever season you're in, we're all working together on this journey home. Yeah, we, that that's part of the reason why we specifically don't really have an age group. We don't have, um, a specific denomination. I mean, Ken's and I are Catholic. And so we, um, you know, our, the theology that we hold like kind of, uh, shapes the weekend, but, um, at the same time, it's only grown in diversity each retreat we have. And we've noticed that like Christians of all walks are coming to this and, I think that's so beautiful because, um, the word Catholic actually means universal. And so I think part of Ken's and I's heart with these has been to like really bring the church experience back to that word of universal, because it's something that, you know, is so near and dear to, to both of our hearts is like unity um, among Christians. So we've seen that play out in beautiful ways at our retreat. Um, and like Ken said, I mean, the retreats have taught us, um, so much about a uh, relationship, like relationship with each other relationship with the women that come, um, because we've noticed like, even with 30 year olds, you know, we still have our little things that we all care about. And so the first night we, we really are intentional with saying, this is, um, going to like this is going to stretch a muscle of like living in community with other women with like over 30 women, you know, because, um, and that's part of it though, is like learning how to be together and learning how to celebrate each other and our differences. And I think it's, it's helped us grow too, to be like, there's going to be some people that have all these needs and we need to meet those needs as best we can, because that's how we show them love and that's how they need it. But, but we all need love in different ways, you know? So that's taught me so much. Um, even this Lent, I've been joking with Ken's, like, I feel like my call this Lent is like really to like dig deeper into like my reaction to things, like my reaction to other people's personalities or their needs or their wants and like reacting in love. And so that's um, just a theme that she and I have been talking about so much. And I just am so grateful for the retreats because they've helped like kind of build and strengthen that muscle so much of just like, how do we love each other in all of our differences? And once you nail it, which I haven't a hundred percent, but once you do get closer to it, it's like such a beautiful feeling to be able to just love and accept everyone for where they're at. I think that relational focus is so much then what informs our faith and ability to relate to Christ well, because you think about it, if Christ is like your one and only relationship, there's really a lack of understanding of how to be in relationship that can result from that. If you're trying to be a Christian in a vacuum kind of thing, where if you look at the way that friendships and these other relationships, even family relationships, et cetera, inform the way that we view relationship with Christ, because that's how, what I see on retreat so often come out of it is that so many of the women encounter the love of Christ concretely through the love of other people and the way that they are present to them and realizing that that's so similar to how Christ is present to us. As a friend too. Yes. He's our friend. And I know that, um, when we're growing up, our first encounter with Christ oftentimes is who our father is, you know, um, or who, a leader in our family is. And so that, that can be a wound coming in. There's so many places of woundedness that can come into our retreats, but then there's this safe space of we're all here wanting and desiring that. And so 
it's an immediate letdown of those masks you speak of and opening up to other people and desiring and hoping, being hopeful that there's someone in this room, there's multiple women in this room who are going to see me for who I am and who are going to cheer me on move afterwards. And that's been such a fruit um, from these weekends and just seeing them grow and grow is seeing the women come together and go off on their own, start things together, form their own bond that B and I can't even touch. Like we don't even know some of these stories that happen in these small groups or when Jill prays over them and when then what that does, but we see it and that's enough um, to keep doing them. And you just, can't, you can feel Christ there for sure. And I think too, like one thing um, that I'm just thinking of as we're talking is like you said, Jill, how the retreats show Christ's love through each other. And part of the retreats that may have sounded a little silly to some people, but it just was so such a clear, like call that Ken's and I felt was to make this retreat very, um, like almost bougie for these women, because a lot of times like they are moms or they're just overworked. They might not even have kids. It's just this crazy world is like, go, go, go. And a lot of times, like we don't ever have an opportunity to be treated like the daughters that we are. And so Ken's and I really felt so strongly, like we need to have a photographer there. Like these women need to see their beauty. Like they need to see themselves change and they need the memory of this weekend. We need a masseuse, you know, because even just down to our physical being, like we need to be okay physically to be okay mentally. And then just like ordering food, like Ken's is such a like food connoisseur that we have like different cuisines. We have a caterer the first night we have a chef and, you know, we pass around hors d'oeuvres and drinks. And I think it's, that's important for, for the feminine genius because we need to be served in order to go back home and serve. And so I think that's something too, that like in a, in a funny way, if you were to talk to a diocesan retreat planner, they'd be like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. And I used to work for those people. And I would explain to them, like, you don't understand it's working. And it does show Christ's love because we're serving these women in a way that Christ would have served, you know? And so it may seem um, different, but in some way, shape or form, it is showing it is these women feel seen. And I think that's how we ultimately feel in a healthy relationship with Christ is seen, known and loved. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's cool. That's awesome. I, I want to pivot ever so slightly. And because both of you are live in kind of a different family situation than a lot of people being a part of military families in different ways. And I would be so interested in how your experience on retreat has informed the way that you show up to these living situations that you find yourselves in right now as families. That's a good question. Oh man, that is a good question. I'm like, am I doing that? <laughs> um, well, Ken, you transit, you guys transitioned out. So I don't know if the question is different for you, but um, I think maybe ultimately it is harder to find community in military life. So we actually have noticed a lot of military women gravitate towards our retreats. Um, but I, yeah, I think that it can be ultimately hard to, to find that community, but we've also realized outside of the military, even it is hard in this age group to find community. Um, so I, I mean, I think that with the women who come on retreat, who are military, a lot of them deal with many deployments. They deal with their spouse gone all the time and they end up being the, almost like a single parent. And that is like a huge cross to bear. And so we really like to roll the red carpet out for those women because it, it's a different life. Um, and then, you know, just personally, I think the crosses that we've had with that lifestyle has been um, just physically being apart, which is not natural for, for marriage. So, um, so that brought about a lot of challenges for us in the early parts of our marriage. And I think what, what I've brought to the retreat and kind of like the design of it was just like this idea that a lot of times we walk our marriage struggles alone and like, we don't have anyone to share it with. We feel like we're alone and like, praise God, we're in a, a super healthy place now, 
But when we first got married and we were trying to like navigate this military life of being separated and just like having to deal with all of that, it it felt very isolating. So I think like with these retreats and this opportunity to share with other women, you talk amongst each other and you realize I'm not alone in this. Like a lot of other marriages have either gone through this or they're going through it right now. Um, and someone said it on our first retreat, it might've been Mary Lenneberg, but there was a moment where all the women were in a circle on the floor and they were talking about marriage and relationship advice. And there was like a six-year-old, there was a 20-year-old and they were all talking about like different pieces of wisdom. And Mary was like, this is how it used to be guys. Like women were in community. Like they raised their kids together. Like they talked about their marriages together. And like, now we're so isolated with everything, especially with, you know, just like the pandemic and everything that there's something so natural about retreat. Like we were meant to do this forever, you know? So, um, yeah, that's been my biggest takeaway with my own like life and marriage and and family life. Yeah. And similarly, not to get too military on it, but Colin and I got married right out the gate. He went to Iraq um, for seven months. And then when he came back, we moved on base and I was pregnant and I made a vow there. And I said, I will not make any new friends, especially with this group, you know, very like a judgmental, like way that in my suffering, instead of like being like, how can I make something positive and expect something good out of this? I'm going to go in and close off. And then the opposite happened because I have a good guardian angel or something, or God was like, that's not going to work here. And three of my best friends are from this isolated time in my life. And two of them came on the retreat, um, Colin and Katie, who are also bonding right now because they're in a very similar situation in their marriages. You can take this out, whatever. Um, And it's just really cool to see the unity, like B said, that comes from this. Um, but I want to speak to that because I think there's no good time for women, for community. I see it in some of my, um, friends, uh, sisters-in-law and, and many people, um, who are so busy and working so hard for, for themselves and for their family. And that they just like, wait till the weekend to just be with, just to take a break. And, there is no good time for any friendship or anything, but there's, you need it that you cannot survive any season in your life or thrive rather any season in your life without other women. Women are meant to help one another and to, um, be there. And we can't be in our marriages alone. B said that you need to, um, have the support from like-minded women that, are pumping you up and helping you and growing you. And you need to see women who've been through the, the shit for a lack of a better word, been through just the ringer and come out stronger than ever. And we need those examples. If you're just living in here all the time. And I, I love prayer and I, and I love um, our rosary and the Catholic faith, but sometimes that's not enough. We need community to be praying over us. We need to be diving deeper and, um, just to drop everything and say, Hey, let me help you sister. And that is what you find in community on our retreats, I hope. And just, um, with good women, if you're willing to open that part, especially in your suffering, don't close off. If you're in a busy time, a hard time, a time where you're like, I don't think I see an end in sight. Well, good. (laughs) Just, you need to go find a woman then and have a friend and she'll support you. So yeah, similar. I've taken that and I've seen it in our, um, retreats just unfold. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful. You know, it's interesting because when you were talking, Bridget, it reminded me about Mary saying that this is how it used to be. And I wonder if part of the culprit of the lack of connection that we experience is actually, you know, even sort of pre-technology, like the information boom, where there's this sense of like, if I can get the information, like the raw material information, then I should be able to implement it myself. Then I should be able to get what I need out of that. And that should be enough. And then with just, when you add that into just the basic structures of not, you know, living in kind of dispersed communities and not a lot of walking and all of the other things that are just the other factors in modern life. It's so interesting that 
it can feel like it's a weakness to want that, but there's also like something inherently human about needing that. Mm -hmm. I think it takes vulnerability to be in relationship. And I think that that's what I've noticed. Um, there's even been close friends of mine who I've been like, please come on retreat. Like I'll know what they're going through and you can tell there's just an uncomfortability with it. And I still pray those friends come and I think they will someday. And I know Ken's has these people in her life too, that were just like, you have to trust us. You have to just show up and just trust us that it's going to be an epic weekend. Um, but yeah, I think it takes a vulnerability that we are slowly moving away from, especially with social media. Like people really are so, um, it's ingrained to now only show like the highlight reel of yourself that like, it does feel so foreign to be vulnerable. But what I've noticed in this past, like two, three years of going on my own, like kind of healing journey and becoming a retreat junkie, like all these retreats outside of our own that I've gone on that I'm like, it is so worth it to take the deep dive, to be vulnerable, because even when you're vulnerable yourself, like it opens up your heart so much more for a relationship. And I've seen that happen with like parents. Like I've had a huge father wound most of my life and like retreats are the only reason and the only catalyst that my dad and I are like friends now, because I needed that time to like go deep into myself, to pray through that wound and so, um, yeah, but it does take vulnerability. And I think a lot of women, um, like Ken said, um, put up, you know, that face a little bit. And so you got to take a, take a dive and like, um, you know, it's scary. Like Ken's and I went to, um, healing the whole person with Dr. Bob shoots and sister Miriam. And like, before we went, we were texting each other. Like, we're so scared. Like, what are we going to see in ourselves that, cause we knew it's a very deep retreat. It's a very intense healing retreat. And it was intense. Like it was very emotional. Um, but it's like, when you go there with a friend, you know, when you, even if you go alone, you know, I think it's like, you're always going to bear beautiful fruit from going there. Yeah. And I think also I've seen this in friends to be kind of touched on it. It's hard to trust when you've been broken and when someone has just totally burned you as a friend or, and it's, it's hard to forgive. Let's be honest. It's really hard to forgive others because I think we're really hard on ourselves and, oh, we would never do that. You know, I would never talk like that person did to me. And I think, um, going to that place of forgiving another person who really hurt you and then opening that space for an opportunity for relationship is, is so important because we're all going to hurt each other. And I think that's a hard pill to swallow. I'm going to hurt everyone that I touch. You know, if I get close with you, I might do something that bothers you or, or hurts you. So it's really important to understand deeply that we're imperfect. I'm, I myself am just growing too. And so if I can have grace with my friendships and people in my past, then that's where the Holy spirit is. And he moves in those places. And that's why friendship lasts because we're all shooting at an ultimate goal together to be close to him, to God. And, and so I, I've kind of learned that over the years that th that's okay. That, that, that happened. Let's move from that and not hold on and grasp so tightly and, and expect another broken relationship. Cause we all come from brokenness. Every one of us has, has a broken past and um, some way or another. So just having openness. I love that so much because I think that that's where a lot of people get caught up in the weeds is like looking at what could happen, what has happened, what they are capable of, what the other person could be capable of, and really just getting caught in the weeds essentially of the what ifs and the, this could happen. And instead of looking at on the other side of things, what could happen and also building those concrete skills that allow you to be in community and move through those things and not looking at those as things that are just kind of, well, no one knows possibly how to deal with this. You know, it's an insurmountable obstacle and kind of throwing your hands up in despair at it. Yeah. I heard that they're make or break things be and I talk about that all the time. Like a little thing could make or break a, a relationship. If it's not founded on truth, goodness, and beauty, you would just be like, Oh, 
I can toss them, but that doesn't happen when you all are shooting for the same thing and you have a heart for Christ and others. Well, I think that's such a beautiful place to wrap up our conversation for today. Thank you so much for both being here with me today. It's always a pleasure to talk with you because of the retreats I have been on with you. I feel like you are both my dear friends, even though it's just been a hound, you know, several handfuls of hours that we've spent together, but I always enjoy every time I get to chat with you. Thank you, Jill. Thanks, Jill. It was awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Authentic Uprising podcast. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on a podcast app, make sure that you hit subscribe so that you can get all of our updates automatically in your app on YouTube. And we also ask that you leave us a review or a comment. If you're in a podcast app, leave us a review that helps us get seen by more people. And on YouTube, leave us a comment. Let us know what you loved from the episode and send it on to a friend. I am sure that you know someone who really needs the message in this podcast from today. I also encourage you to um, check out Pink Salt Riot. That is my company that sponsors this podcast. We have an incredible online shop full of all kinds of beautiful and unique Christian lifestyle goods. You can shop our whole line at pinksaltriot.com. I'll see you next week.